It was with its third installment that the Far Cry series really made its way into the gaming mainstream. As a result, Far Cry 2 tends to be a bit overlooked, with many hardcore fans of the series considering it to be an underrated game. After I had already completed and for the most part enjoyed Far Cry 1, I was looking forward to playing Far Cry 2. But now that I've beaten the game, I must confess that I'm not a fan. Gone are the days of Jack Carver. In Far Cry 2, we choose one out of nine different avatars that we want to play. I went with a guy called Paul. Certain story elements will play out differently depending on your character, but nothing major changes in the grand scheme of things. After having chosen my protagonist, the game started, and I immediately felt like I must have accidentally skipped the opening cutscene or something like that. Okay. Far Cry 2 starts surprisingly abruptly, but at least it communicates its premise clearly. We have traveled to an unspecified African country in order to kill an arms dealer called a Jekyll. In the aforementioned country, a war rages between two factions, the APR and the UFLL, and the Jekyll has armed both sides. So far, so good. However, I have a number of problems with Far Cry 2's story. The game's predecessor already had an at best average story, but this one is even worse. What bothered me the most was the lack of memorable characters. Please don't ask me to remember a single name aside from the Jekyll, because I couldn't. What makes this even worse is the subpar voice acting. Everyone here sounds like someone in elementary school who is giving his first presentation and he cannot wait to get over with it ASAP. I kind of get it in the case of the African characters because English probably isn't their first language. But even the Jekyll doesn't sound menacing or charismatic at all. You're fired. You know it, so do I. You had your shot, but now it's over. And since men like you only work for money, you're no longer my problem. We also have to talk about our main character. Contrary to Carver in Far Cry 1, he is now a silent protagonist. Now that's not inherently a problem. Even a silent character can have goals, but that's where Far Cry 2 falls flat. My protagonist just did whatever someone told him to do. He seemingly didn't have any morals or agenda of his own. Does he want to kill the Jekyll or does he like him? It's hard to say. The only times when we get a glimpse of personality is during the loading screens. Now let that sink in for a moment. The other main reason why Far Cry 2's story is so underwhelming comes down to its mission design. In the larger settlements, both the APR and the UFLL each have one headquarter, basically right next to each other. A ceasefire between the two factions ensures that no fights are breaking out here. Essentially, most of the game's 32 story missions consist of you doing tasks for both factions. These are usually very simple. Kill a person, blow something up, stuff like that. While this is a bit repetitive to begin with, it's nothing in comparison to the way you actually acquire these missions. Basically, you enter the headquarter, hand over your weapons and walk up a couple of stairs. Usually, two guys that you don't care about talk to you about things that you don't care about. They offer you a mission, you accept, and they pay you in rough diamonds. And after that, you leave the building. That doesn't seem all that bad at first, but do it 20 plus times and it will be, trust me. What's also problematic is that doing the actual missions only makes up a small fraction of the time you spend playing Far Cry 2. I don't have any hard stats here, but I would estimate that at least 60% of the game, if not more, comes down to you traveling to the respective locations. And traveling can be a real pain in the rear end, as we will get to shortly. For this review, I focused solely on the main story, which I needed 9.5 hours to complete. The problem is that there's just no tension except for the very beginning and the very end. Usually I would have said something along the lines of, well, the developers should have just cut out all of the boring stuff. But when you do that in Far Cry 2, you end up with a 3 hour game. Admittedly I'm being a bit harsh here. When you finish the game, you actually get to know about some of the secrets that you found out, or didn't find out in my case. Oftentimes there will be alternative solutions to the main missions as well as bonus missions. I assume these lead you to the secret stuff. So the story might actually be minimally better, but it doesn't really change the fact that it's structurally boring. While Far Cry 1 did have some larger levels, it really is Far Cry 2 which doubles down on the open world aspect. Or to be more precise, you start out with one pretty large open world and you unlock a second equally large one at the midway point of the game. Generally, I think it's great for the immersion that you can just travel across the entire open world without any loading screens. But needless to say, an open world also comes with its downsides. First of all, there are your typical Ubisoft collectibles. 
In the case of Far Cry 2, you can find briefcases filled with rough diamonds. There are also radio towers which grant you access to bonus missions. I value my time, so I ignored most of that stuff. There's a quick travel option in this game. Using buses, you can teleport to any bus station in a matter of seconds. However, there are only 5 of them per map, which isn't a lot for maps of that size. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't wanna miss the bus stations, but you still have to do a lot of the traveling yourself. We can drive cars, quads, trucks and other vehicles. The problem is that getting somewhere is a nightmare most of the time. Not only are there loads of hostile outposts, enemy vehicles also actively patrol the streets. They will shoot at you and damage your vehicle, so you have to get out and not only kill the attackers, but also repair your vehicle, because it's so slow in its damaged state that even 900 year old Master Yoda could have run it. Rinse and repeat a couple of times and you will soon have no interest in exploring the world anymore. Speaking of the world, this is something that we have to talk about as well. On a general note, it takes courage to go for a fairly obscure setting like Africa, and I respect Ubisoft for trying something different here. In practice, however, I don't like Far Cry 2's world. The colors range from yellow to brown and grey, and that's about it. Everything looks extremely bleak and, dare I say it, generic. Now this does make sense to a certain extent. Far Cry 2 is quite a dark game tonally and the world reflects that. By the way, it is also quite a dark game visually, you should definitely turn up your brightness. There are absolutely people out there who will appreciate this bleakness, I'm just not one of them. I am looking more for a world that I feel at home in. This is also why even though Far Cry 2 is the objectively better looking game, I found Far Cry 1's visuals to be more appealing. While exploring the open world, you will frequently discover safe houses. These are usually guarded by 1-3 to three soldiers, so you can take them out fairly easily. After that, you can enter the safe house and go to sleep. Some time will pass and most importantly, you will be able to save. You can also save at other locations in the game, such as bus stations. But the safe houses are the most important because they are fairly common. Yes, Far Cry 2 once again has a bit of a weird saving system. It's definitely better than the one in the first Far Cry because it's more predictable. That being said, I still don't get what's so bad about just doing an autosave after you've completed an important story objective. So in theory you can still lose a lot of progress, and to be fair this was definitely a problem in practice as well. But I don't want to complain too much because this is clearly a step in the right direction. And it should also be mentioned that you won't die anywhere near as often as in Far Cry 1. There are four difficulties called Easy, Normal, Hardcore and Infamous. I played on normal like I usually do and the level of challenge was basically spot on. Definitely an improvement over its predecessor where the normal difficulty felt more like a very hard one. There's a lot more room for errors. Even though armor doesn't exist in this game anymore, it feels like you are able to take a lot more shots before going down, though this applies to the enemies as well. A lot of times I thought I had put enough bullets into a soldier to kill him many times over, only to see him still on his feet. This is a problem even with high caliber guns like the ones mounted on vehicles. The hit feedback isn't great at all. Aside from that, we don't regenerate health by picking up medkits anymore. Instead, we have a small supply of syringes that we can use in battle. Your health points are divided into 5 brackets. If you only lose a fraction of one of these brackets, it will regenerate automatically after a while. Personally, I think this is a nice compromise. One of my favorite features in Far Cry 1 were the binoculars which you could use to mark enemies on the minimap. Technically speaking, a similar device also exists in Far Cry 2, but you can only use it to highlight certain objects, which makes it practically useless for fights. Similarly to Far Cry 1, we are able to carry 4 weapons, but there's one major difference. In the first game, we were able to pick up any guns we wanted, whereas here we are limited to one specific type per weapon slot. To be more precise, this means we are able to carry a machete, some sort of pistol, an automatic rifle and a special weapon. This could be a crossbow which shoots explosive bolts for example. A really cool weapon by the way. However, assault rifles are still by far the most versatile weapon in the game and that's why I use them 95% of the time. I apologize for not being able to show you a wider range of weapons. At the same time I should mention that this does get better the more weapons you buy, like when you get a SMG for your pistol slot. You can use your rough diamonds to unlock new guns at various shops scattered throughout the map. It's also possible to buy upgrades such as the ability to carry more syringes. 
In theory, you can also just pick up the guns that deceased enemies have left behind. But these are prone to jamming and might just entirely fall apart. That is of course not very convenient in the midst of battle. Weapons from the store also just look a lot cleaner. However, I rarely ever visited a weapons shop because they are too rare and as I said, traveling is not exactly fun in this game. I would have preferred it if the shops had been incorporated into the safe houses. Additionally, the interface on the computer that you use to buy weapons is unnecessarily complicated. Generally, a lot of things in this game require more clicks than they should. And the loading screens have no reason to be this long in a 15 year old game. Now that we've already touched on some technical aspects, I want to talk about the bugs that I encountered while playing Far Cry 2, because there were a number of them. First of all, I experienced like 3 crashes that were all a couple of hours apart. Not a huge deal, but they are annoying when you haven't saved in a while. There are also a number of physics bugs, ranging from the very common bubble heads to NPCs breaking the continuum of space and time. This is obviously immersion breaking. Occasionally an all out war would start in the cease fire zones even though I didn't do anything. If this is intentional it would be a low key genius move from the developers, but I suspect it has to do with the random explosions going off, which is also another physics bug. Aside from that the mouse sensitivity in the menus is all over the place. At first that was a problem in the actual game as well, but it later solved itself. And most of this review actually wasn't recorded in full HD either, but rather in something slightly below that, for reasons that would take too long to explain. All in all none of the bugs were too horrible on their own, but overall they did detract from my enjoyment of the game. And just like in Far Cry 1 there's a multiplayer mode. The official servers were shut down in 2021, but as far as I understand it, you can still play online if you download a community patch. Truth be told, I didn't care to try this out, so this is a single player only review. I really hope this review didn't seem like I was just hating on Far Cry 2, because that's not what I was trying to do. But the fact of the matter is that I am extremely unimpressed by the game. There are some things here and there which Far Cry 2 does better than its predecessor. For example, it has a less frustrating save system. But more importantly, I think it is worse than Far Cry 1 in a lot of ways. The story is below average, the mission design is repetitive, traveling across the world is unnecessarily hard and the game is visually boring. My final verdict for Far Cry 2 would have been a 6 out of 10, but I am going to subtract half a point for the immersion breaking bugs and crashes that I experienced. I know it sounds harsh, but at the end of the day I call it like I see it. Far Cry 2 currently costs 10 euros on Steam, which is a perfectly fine price if I'm being honest. I am not a fan of Far Cry 2, but most people will probably enjoy it.